Hey, welcome back to a brand new episode of Dapp or Decentralized App Tutorial. Um, I have one just open up ready. This is kind of what we'll be building. I'm just going to show you real quick what we're going to do. Uh, I just disconnected, but if I connect my wallet, I get in here and I have my account. And this is the same account that I see on MetaMask. So that's 3C7, that's 3C7 here. I have my RingB balance, my Coleman balance, my mainnet balance. I can switch around to another account and it will change accordingly. And I can disconnect and connect anytime I want. If you're new here, or if this is the first time you're hearing this term, dApp, uh, what does it mean, right? Coindesk give you this, uh, give us this following definition. So dApp is a digital app found on any smartphone or laptop uh, with the additional feature of employing blockchain technology to keep users' data out of the hands of the organizations behind it. Just like cryptocurrency is decentralized money, dApps are just decentralized apps, right? Dapps are as varied as conventional apps as well. They can provide social networks, they can provide games, entertainment, productivity tools, so on. So a good sign that you're actually working with a dApp is when you don't have a traditional database handling user login, user account creation, uh, etc. Instead, we decentralize it by directly allowing the user to work with programs using a web free wallet. This is why um, when you work with dApp, usually you typically see this MetaMask installed and then you just connect wallet. And then from here, you could maybe vote for someone, you could join a community, you could stake something, you could invest into a project, uh, so and so forth but the gateway to these functionalities is not a traditional database handling user account user authentication because that's kind of the web tool world, right where your accounts and provisioning of accounts are controlled by the guys who develop that platform right so when you work with web3 or you when you develop for web3 you want to think about how you could decentralize this function of allowing users to work with programs your programs using a web3 wallet so something like a metamask right and these programs too by the way these programs in a, in, a, in a true decentralized fashion they're not also going to be your usual closed source uh, proprietary code, but rather what is known as the Web3 world um, is, is this thing called the smart contract. So if you'd like to learn more about smart contract engineering, I have a playlist with 7 to 10 videos in it and you can click on my channel uh, to find a full playlist. I also want to start off by saying that I have another video where um, I think I've uploaded it to about 2-3 weeks ago, which walks you through setting up React and using it with Web3.js. So that's using Web3.js. Today we're not going to be using that, we're going to be using UseDap. So UseDap, so this is pronounced as U-S-E, the use, and then dap, decentralized app. So we're going to be using use that. But I have another video that talks about dApp development using just web3.js and React. It's about 40 to 45 minutes long, which with, with very detailed timestamps and using only web3.js, no other dependencies. So if React or this whole web3 thing um, is a new concept to you, I recommend you place a bookmark on this video. Watch that one instead. So link will be in the description before hopping back here to continue watching the rest of the video. Um, so this is so I can keep this video focused on linking on, on just linking the use dApp with our React and not have to explain step by step what you may already know, kind of like things like setting up a project, creating the dependencies, uh, scaffolding, use state. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that anymore, right? So we're going to keep this video short and focus on use dApp and React. And this is kind of where we're going to build it. We're going to just have a simple uh, dApp wallet. Uh, users are going to be able to log in, log out, disconnect and connect. And when they connect, uh, immediately pull that in and then show the ring bit balance, colon balance, mainnet balance. And if you change accounts, you can also connect to those accounts. And you will see now I have 000. zero, zero. But if I change accounts again, so let me click on that and change it back to this account. And I have that. Um, if you want to work with Ganache, I also have a video to talk about how do you connect this MetaMask to Ganache and you can use your Ganache balance and sort of experiment uh, within this local blockchain environment and you can do that as well. So that's also another video that I have that's about 10, I think 10, 20 minutes long. So I'm also going to put a link there and you can find that. But if you have even a little bit of familiarity with React though, then great. Continue watching because we're going to be using this use dApp. Um, so let me hop over to this website real quick and show you why this is an excellent project to help you build dApps uh, faster. Right. So it says here that this is a framework for rapid dApp development. Uh, what does it mean? Well, it provides you connection management. It has uh, network switching, allows you to switch networks, handling multiple networks, uh, which is why we could use you know all these three different. Uh, we could have as more as many as we want. If we have we want to work with other kind of uh, ring B common, but you also want to work with other test nets, you can do so. And so you have the reading blockchain state. You have the browser plugin, um, transactions. You can track transaction state, history, notifications. And good design is opinionated. It's built on top of React, either JS, Web3 React, uh, Waffle. Use that builds on top of all these this modern uh, dApp stack developed by the community, including all these libraries, eaters.js, Web3 React, uh, Waffle. So as a high level overview, use that builds on top of all these modern dApp stack developed by the community, including libraries like eaters.js, uh, Web3 React, multi-call pattern developed by Maker, Waffle, used by the, uh, use that for integration testing. And if we scroll down a little bit, give you some example, how to work with that. And then there's some resources and stuff. Uh, we're not gonna worry about any of this, but I wanna say that all the code will be on my GitHub. 
So this is where it's going to be at. I'm going to leave a link as well. So you just go to github.com slash only phantom slash ballot app. That's all. You don't need uh, the rest of this. You don't need any of this. So just uh, github.com uh, only phantom. That's my username on GitHub and then ballot app, right? So the code will be on my GitHub. You'll find the link in the description. I encourage you to do three things. So the first one, download the whole code from GitHub and use it as a reference while you code it out following this video tutorial. So you want to pause the video a little bit here and there, right? So uh, number two, pause whenever you need to and type the code out by hand, not copy and paste, uh, but actually try to type it out by hand before looking at the source code or before copy and pasting, right? So in fact, try not to copy and paste, try to type it out because that builds good muscle memory and that um, that is kind of a uh, true, true repetition. You kind of get very familiar with the syntax and you want to basically feel very comfortable with the whole process of like starting up a React app and then bringing in Web3.js or bringing in use app and then trying to link them up all together, all right? So first thing, download the source code. Second, pause whenever you need to, type the code out by hand. And the last thing, subscribe to the channel for so much more content on smart contract programming, Web3, Dab, uh, data science, machine learning, that kind of stuff. If you have something you'd like to see me cover, leave a comment. If you get stuck anywhere in a tutorial, leave a comment as well. I know it's really cringe to ask for viewers to subscribe, but consider this. I have no ads turned on, no monetization, no donation box, no subscription tiers, no membership fees. So the only way I know that you're enjoying my work um, is true subscription numbers. It's the only way I get your support. Oh, and by you sharing the video on social media too. So when you subscribe, you're kind of letting me know that you're engaging the content, that you find value out of it, and that pushes me to put more content out on this subject, on this topic. Um, otherwise, I will have very little statistics or data to look at to gauge whether or not this is on the right, uh, I'm on the right path on this, or maybe I should you know move towards other kind of other formats of content and stuff. So enough rambling. Let's get started. All right, so if you're following along from my last tutorial, we have the app.js, there, there's the set states here, and I have my decentralized ballot. I'm just gonna get the server up and running. So gonna go ahead and just say npm start. Uh, all right, so it's not found. Because it's not found, let's go ahead and just install the dependencies. Just npm install. And just as a reminder, what we're seeing here is uh, the same dependencies as we have in the last uh, part of this series so we have react we have uh, uh, web tree and we have use that so that's really what we need okay so use that react and web tree if you do the create react app route you should be fine so if you do something like npx create react app and you give it a name you should get uh the same thing but then you want to optionally install uh web tree we're not going to be using it so it's optional what we're going to be using in this video is the use that core right so you want to do it npm install um use that core and now that we've done that, let's go ahead and just try and run that npm start. npm start is going to look at the scripts and it's going to find a start and then it's going to run this. So React scripts come from this, right? So let's just make sure everything is running. All right, it is running. So there's, there's that. Um, the rest of this stuff are all the same. So if you want to just maybe skip along and not have to do this by, by hand, then all you need to do is to just go to my GitHub, uh, go into the repo and just do a fork and then do an npm install and you would get exactly the same thing as I have here. So just fork it to your account and then do a git pull and then from there, do an npm install that's gonna install all the dependencies and you will have the React, React DOM, uh, Web3 and the use step uh, core, right? And now we can see that in our browser. So this is still the old version and we're gonna start from here, kind of a starting point, all right? So this is the easy way of doing it, just to do a git pull. If you wanna do the hard way, I, I think it's a better way, is to just go back to the earlier video that I point to you in the description and uh, and follow along and actually create this from scratch. So it's just follow along, it's not a very long video, it's about 45 minutes, 40, 45 minutes, so just follow along and then you will end up at this same stage as well. So let me just speed up a little bit and just walk you through everything in here and uh, explain what's happening, all right? So if you've never seen a React project before, now, if you look at the, the public, there is the index.html. Index.html, what's really happening is there is a title. Let's actually change this right now. And let's just call it decentralized app, app right? And all right, so it says here, check whether or not the browser has enabled JavaScript. If, if you have, then um, this is not going to show. And then otherwise, then it's just this. This is really the main uh, div. But there's nothing in this div, right? It says div, it gives an idea of root, but there's nothing in here. So why is that? Now, if you look at index.js, let me put that side by side so you can see it. Um, in index.js, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the element. So here it says find the element that has the idea of root, and then from there, render the app. But where is this app from? It says import app from app. So where is this app from? Let's click on that. So open that up, put this next to the site. And here we have function app and we export this. So when we say import app, and then, okay, you're importing app, but you're not, you're not actually rendering it, right? So you wanna render it. Render it on what? 
on what element? So on the root, where is root? Here. So constant root, root, create root container. Where is the container? Here. Uh, get element by ID, root. So this is what it finds and this is what is being placed. So this app is going to be placed into this is what it's saying, right? If you change this to something else called like main something, you, you then you have to change this to main as well. But uh, we're going to keep, keep it root, right? So you just save that. Uh, all of this is still working. If you come back here, you see that your uh, decentralized ballot is working. Obviously, you want to have MetaMask. If you if you find all of this being uh, a little bit unfamiliar to you, then uh, it's probably a good hint that you want to go back to the earlier video and actually start from there because I go into a lot more details about what's happening. You know, what's what's a Web3 wallet? You know, how do you integrate them? But for now, I'm just going to assume that you have most of this knowledge already and I'm just going to work on uh, refactoring this app to use our use that. All right. So close out all of this and I only have index.js and we're going to start from here. So first thing I'm going to do is um, actually index.js is fine. I'm going to use app.js instead. Uh, for the most part, when you're doing something like React, index.js is something that you never really have to touch. It's just kind of like that's the index is that uh, it, its job is really simple is to collect the main app or you know whatever components there are that and basically render that into the div in the HTML. So inject this into the, the div in the HTML. That's really what index is doing. So for the most part, you're not going to really have to touch that. App.js though is something that is interesting. This is where most of the app logic happens, all of the magic happens in here. So let's go ahead and maybe try and change a couple of things. So I want to first take away the balance. Um, I don't want to use this anymore because all of this is kind of using the old web tree module and we're not going to be using the web tree module uh, anymore. We're going to actually be using the use that. Right. So because of that, I can either comment that out or I can just delete that. Uh, in this case, I'm, I'm probably going to be, yeah, I'm probably just going to comment that out right now. And I also don't need this anymore. So I'm going to take that away. Instead, what I'm going to do is to bring in a separate component, which I'm going to create. You can create a new directory here and you can just say make directory. And you can, let's just see where we at um, least. Okay. So we're going to say make directory source components. You, otherwise, you could also just, I guess, right click and just do it new folder, um, whichever one you prefer. All right. And in the new and again, you can touch a file using just touch. That's just create a file or you could just right click and you can say new file. And in this case, I'm going to call it wallet. So I'm going to create a new component called wallet and we're going to put .js. And here I'm going to use a short snippet so called RAFCE. And if you want this, you can just go to an extension and install that. Um, install the, the uh, ES6 React uh, snippet and you get that. But I have import React from React, so, sort of some boilerplate here, so I don't have to type that out manually. And this is kind of all I need. So instead of wallet, I'm going to call it uh, the app wallet. So just decentralize app wallet. Right, I'm going to save that. Um, this is created in components, but we're not bringing that in yet. So we want to bring that in. And the way we do that is to just go back to app.js. So you want to say import. Okay, what do we have here? Wallet.js, all right? So we're gonna call it wallet. And you wanna say from, now where do we put them? We put them in components folder. So you wanna say dot components, and then you wanna say wallet, and that's it. Now that, it, now that you imported that, you wanna bring this and render that somewhere in the UI, because if you just import that, it does nothing for you, right? So um, on second thoughts, maybe we should just delete all of that and just bring wallet in here like this, all right? Um, if you save right now, you should see your hot roll reloading working and you should see the app wallet. And the app wallet actually comes from this, the the app wallet here. So there is no more balance. There's no more account address. Let's get back to app.js. I'm gonna move the window down a little bit so it doesn't um, block out the views. Probably keep it like this, all right. And let's get back to the IDE and let's see what we need to do next because we don't need web3 anymore we don't need this uh, module anymore this is in the last video if you really want to learn how to work with web3 i have a whole video on that you just have to go ahead and look at that so i'm not gonna this is not useful to me anymore so i'm gonna just remove that and if i remove that all of this is not gonna work so i'm just gonna remove that as well i'm gonna remove all the use effect as well in fact none of the use state matters to us anymore the async function doesn't matter anymore so i'm gonna delete all of that so just kind of a very nice clean slate right so import use state use effect from react we haven't really used any of this but i guess we can keep that there or maybe we can use it when we need to so right now we don't even need that um if we need to we bring it in all right if we don't need to we just omit that from from here uh what we do need now is to wrap the whole thing here with this thing called a dap provider so uh, we need to import that all right so let's go ahead and actually bring that in so i want to say import that provider like this from use that call all right so import 
that provider from use that call. Um, and what do we do with this? We want to wrap this over our application, our main application. So our main application is going to be this. So all of this should be wrapped under that. So what we can do is to just create something up here and we can say that provider. Um, we are just going to take this, take that out, put that in here and just close that. And we can tap off this in, save that. So we have the div class name app, uh, header class name app header, we have the wallet, but now it's all wrapped under that provider. So this is the dApp provider, we brought that in from use dApp call. If you're getting any issues here, it's probably because you didn't install this correctly. So you wanna make sure you do the same thing, npm install. So um, look at package.json, there's the use dApp call, right? So if you did not get that, you either do an npm install and you do a use dApp call, like that, use dApp slash call, or you can just do npm install and that would just look at your package, package.json and just install all of that. And if you don't know where to get this file, it's on my GitHub link. Just click on that, click on download. If you have any problems, leave a comment and I'll come and uh, help you out with that, okay? So import that provider from use that core and wrap the whole thing in here. Uh, this is still not gonna work because it still needs something called a config. So you kind of need a config. Um, and this config will be something like a object. We are going to put these values in here, but let's not forget about that by just specifying it here first. So let's put config equals to config. And then now we're going to go into config and actually define the config. So the way you work with config, there are a lot of, uh, there is a good, I think you can just search up like use that uh, config and you can read up more about that. Um, I guess you can go into the documentation and click on this and you can see some examples in here config and you can uh, maybe read more about that but um i, I kind of know what i want to do already so i'm not even going to worry about that but just trying to point you to where you can find more details about those things right so if you want to just work with one network then it's the uh, then it's really simple you just have to import that from from uh, use that core and then just bring it in here right so for example if i want to just use ring b i could just go in here and i can say something like ring b and then here I just have to say specify my networks and I can say ring B like this all right and if you plan on using the notifications we probably gonna see that later on but uh, if you want to use that if you plan on using that you can just add a notifications and you want to say what is the expiration period so for example I can have expiration period period I can have 1000 that this is under milliseconds all right so milliseconds and then you can have a check in total. So this is this kind of control when, uh, how long to wait before a timeout. So again, this is also in milliseconds. So just add a note there. And that's kind of it actually. Then you just have to, and when you pass this config back in here, this is all gonna work as long as you're using ring B chain. So if you're not trying to test this on a ring B chain, you wanna have multiple chains, then that's something that you wanna configure as well in the config. So to show you what I mean by that, right? I'm gonna actually go ahead and bring in a few more. I'm gonna bring in Coven and I'm gonna bring in mainnet. If you don't plan on doing that, if you don't have any if on Cohen anyway or mainnet anyway, then you don't have to worry about that even. But uh, I'm just going to show you uh, what I mean by that. So to use multiple networks, we can have a read only uh, chain ID. So for example, in the ring B, this is actually, there is a chain ID in here. So if I click on this, for example, and I say go to definition, I can see there's a chain ID for, and there's a chain name equals to ring B. That's kind of how I usually troubleshoot all the code here. And then it gives you an either scan, I give you a transaction. So all of these are pre-configured. And um, that, that is why it's so productive. When you use something like use that, you don't have to you know remember all of this and find all of this and park all of this in here. It just gives you all of this pre-configured, right? You have Gurley, you have all of this Cohen. So kind of very neat, very easy to, to work with. So you can have chain ID, you can see, oh, ring B chain ID is four. So you have to just pass in four here, but this is not very good practice because you're hard coding it and you're not really sure what where this four comes from. So probably what's better is to just put ring B dot chain ID and that will refer to four anyway. So I'm gonna say ring B uh, dot chain ID. And that is just gonna bring it to, let me just show you again. That is just gonna refer to this four, all right? Instead of hard coding the number four here and in six months time, you look back at your code and you're like, oh, I don't know what where four comes from. So this is probably better. But if you want to have multiple networks, you can also have that. You can say read only um, URLs. Here, there'll be another object. I want to put a comma in here. And again, this is something like three. And then there's something four, there's something. So you're saying that if this person, uh, if the chain ID is four, then use this URL, right? 
But again, this is not very good practice. So you've learned about this uh, method, you should use that method. So let me show you what I mean by that, right? So click on definition. So that's Rothstein, that's main net. Main net chain ID is one. And then ring B is four. Uh, Coburn is 42, all right? Uh, we're not gonna say 42, we're not gonna say one, we're not gonna say four. It's, it's just bad practice. So what we wanna do instead, we wanna switch this using the convention like that here. So we're gonna take the four and we're gonna pass this in. And then we're gonna do the same for Coburn. I'm gonna pass that in, Oops, chain ID. And then we're gonna do the same thing for mainnet and we're gonna pass that in. So this village is one, this village is four, and this village is 42, um, right? And then here you just have to pass in um, a URL that serves as a provider. And where do you get this provider from? For mainnet, uh, typically what you can do is you can just go ahead and say something like import get default provider so default provider from edis all right and you can then call get default provider pass this in and mainnet do a quick save as for ringby and coven uh, what i usually find a lot more success with is to use the infura project so you can go to infura.io and I got a lot more success using Infura here. So Infura is itself, it's a, it says it's the uh, blockchain development suite. It has high availability APIs and developer tools to provide quick, reliable access to the Ethereum and IPFS networks. And here it calls itself the gateway to blockchain development. It has world-leading infrastructure and stuff. I'm not going to really read about that, but it says Ethereum API instant access over to the Ethereum network. So if you want to have your own machine running that uh, as a full node, you can do that. But uh, we're not really going to worry about that. We're just going to use Infura. So kind of like a cloud service uh, to connect to the blockchain instead of having to set up our own node and um, turn our machine into this massive blockchain node. We're just going to use Infura, right? So if you go into the pricing, it says there's a the, you know there's a free pricing plan, uh, core. 100,000 requests per day, three projects free. So that's what we're going to be using. So go ahead and sign up for an account. And once you sign up for an account, I already have an account. So I'm going to click into my dashboard and I already have one. So in here, I click on the settings. And within the settings, there's a key, there's a project ID, and there's a project secret. And then there's the endpoints. So what you want is to change these endpoints and click into. So for example, we have ring B, right? So click into ring B and then you want to copy the whole thing here. I'm going to blow out this part because I don't want you to have my key. You're going to have your own keys instead. So if not, we all going to use this key and everyone is going to max out on 100,000. So <laughs> that's not going to work, is it? So you're going to copy that and you want to bring that back in here and pass this in here like this. So you have ring B.infura.io, we three, um, yada, yada, yada. And then there is the Cohen. And Cohen is kind of the same thing as well. You just have to change this Cohen. But if you want to, you can go back to the service and you just have to change that to common and just copy that, just which is this one, and just paste it in here. But this is exactly the same, just the um, ring, ring B switching up to common, all right? So go to infura.io and do that, and then create a new project, make sure that you have the endpoints, copy it, and then paste it in there, all right? I'm not gonna do that now. Um, my request is 8,600, 8, so I'm actually quite close to 10,000 already, so I'm not gonna um, be pinging this API too much, hopefully. And then I'm gonna go back to Decentralized App. So now that we're done with the config, we have the networks, we have the read-only chain, read-only URLs, we have the main net, ring B, Coven, we have the notifications. It looks like it, we're all set. Um, we have wallet, and so all of this stuff is gonna be in wallet. So we are gonna save this, and we no longer have to touch app.js, we're now just gonna work primarily in wallet.js. So the config is gonna be passed in here, then that's the wallet, we're gonna be working directly, exclusively in wallet from now on, right? So just click into wallet, uh, you can leave app.js on if you want to. Control W to close it if you don't want to. And as a start, we want to first bring in what we need. And that's import use eaters. So I want to say use eaters. Where do we bring this from? We bring it from the use that. Core, right. And here, this is not going to do anything. We still need to call it, right? So we're going to say constant. And we're going to bring three things out of it. So we're going to just use the active activate browser wallet and account and deactivate we're gonna use this free and that's use eaters like this in the s6 this is a form of destructuring we're trying to destructure that we're trying to say okay get activate browser wallet get account and get deactivate and let's bring let's do something with accounts because we just bring that in we're not doing anything so let's go ahead uh i probably want to put this in the hit, header tree so we're gonna say history tag we're gonna say history tag and 
uh, bring this in like this. And then now we're going to use a ternary operator. So we're going to say check whether account exists or not. So if we call account, that means we if, if account exists, it means that our Web3 wallet is already connected to the service. So we can say account, if it exists, then we know that it's connected. Otherwise, we know that it's not connected. So we could do something like a ternary operator in here. And here we can say your account, account, and wrap the whole thing in a diff. So we don't need the quotation mark anymore. We're just going to say your account, account. Actually, instead of diff, let's make it a P. So just a paragraph instead of a diff. All right. Uh, if you want this to be a little bit tidier, you could just tap this down like this and tap this down as well like this or if you want to you can just say format document and we just format the whole document so if the account is connected just show the account address if not we're just gonna have something like p as well and we're gonna say please connect wallet all right okay very short and simple very rude just please connect wallet right so if we look at our browser we see please connect wallet right now all right so it's not connected uh, since there's no way to really connect the wallet right now, let's actually give them an option to connect the wallet. Let's change this to P, maybe change this down here and let's add a button. And the button is going to just going to be a very plain looking button right now. But we're just going to say connect wallet. Um, I guess something like this. And this is just going to be a button element and it's just going to be like this, just very plain and ugly. Uh, what we want to do actually let's maybe give it a break here so it could go down to the next line so br stands for break if we now it's okay now it's going to be connect wallet and then there's a break and then connect wallet uh, what we want to do is that if this is click nothing happens in react see that nothing happens so how do we make it do something when we click on it so in react we could say something like on click and it's going to be a simple function that call the activate browser wallet. So this is why use that is so cool. It gives you all of this stuff. You don't have to write them again. Um, it provides to you out of the box. So we can just say activate browser wallet and save that. I guess let's try to do a refresh. Click on that. Okay, now it's connected. All right, now it works. So let's refresh that again. All right, now it works again. All right, so, so we see that if we connect it, if we try to click on that, it would activate the browser wallet. So activate browser wallet is going to do one of two things. First thing is it's going to check whether or not you have already authorized this account. If not, um, it's going to pop that. It's going to pop out and ask you to do that. So I'm going to click on connected sites and I'm going to disconnect that right now. So disconnect that, this one. And I also need to disconnect that. So disconnect that. Okay, now it says because I disconnect that, it says uh, that wallet, please connect wallet. If I click on connect wallet, you'll see the pop up, the notification asking you to connect with MetaMask. It says select the account to use on this site. This will be localhost, and you just have to pick the right one and say next. All right. And if you say yes, it's gonna say that okay, this DAP will now be able to see address account balance activity and suggest transactions to approve. Do you want to allow your DAP to do that? And of course, we want to say yes, right? So we want to say yes. And now it's gonna connect. It says connecting. Okay. Now you see the your account, and that's done. Um, maybe move this to the left here. Okay, close this out so we can make more space to see more things. Okay, I guess this is fine. And if we're connected, how do we disconnect? How do we say, oh, now we don't want to, we don't want, we want to disconnect our wallet from this DAP now. How do we do that? Now we have the connect wallet. We also want to have a disconnect wallet. So you just have to copy that. And in your account, you could have something very, very similar. So just have a break and pass this button. Um, so one thing about React is you want to have everything under one element, HTML element. So in this case, it could be a div, it could be just a fragment, but we're going to use the div, save that. And here we want to say disconnect instead of connect. So we want to say disconnect. And here it's no longer going to be activate browser wallet. We want to actually have deactivate. So we're going to call this, save that. So now we have disconnect. Okay, cool. So now you can try and play around with that a little bit. You can try and connect, disconnect, and see you know what happens. Okay, it's working. When we disconnect, it now asks us to connect wallet again. We don't see our con uh, we don't see our uh, address anymore. So we say connect. And now it appears again. So you can try and play around with that to make sure that everything is working. If you find the button a little bit ugly, let's do some quick hack. And later on, we can bring something like uh, you know Google uh, Material UI. And we can bring an end design and some of those uh, UI uh, component or like Chakra to sort of 
uh, spice things up but for now let's just not do any of that let's not introduce new dependency just for the ui right now at this level so we're just going to try and do a quick hack to make the button looks a little bit prettier and i'm going to just use raw css all right so it's a little bit if you don't know anything about web design this may come across as very uh, tedious but don't worry about that uh, you can just copy and paste or you just ignore this this is just the styling just really for the front end so i'm just going to add a style and the first curly bracket is to sort of say i'm going to go into javascript mode now and within this i'm actually creating a object and here is where i actually create the style all right so i can have for example in inish i would have border radius in css you would have border dash radius but you can't have that you can't have the dash so instead you're going to use the camel case and you're going to say give it a border radius of four pixel and give it a padding of four pixel and so that what's going to do is to give it a round border a little bit of a round border you can tweak this number if you want and padding just to add some space between uh, around the button so you don't want to disconnect to be so close to the edge of the button you want to add some padding to it and maybe change the width of that as well you can tinker around with these numbers obviously i'm going to change that to 160 pixel and going to have height of about 40 pixel and i'm going to also have a border around the whole thing to maybe give it a one pixel solid black let me save all of that and if i refresh the page Okay, this is much better looking, so a little bit of a hack, but I, I guess we can also change the color of the background if you want to. Um, you can click on this and you can try and play around with background color. Pick a nice color. I guess uh, I guess antique white is going to do, so we just copy that. Um, and we're going to just pass this in. Background, antique white. All right. And... I'm gonna also need to copy and paste this, right? So it's not really nice to just copy and paste code uh, all around the place because if you change one, you need to change both. So what I decided to do instead, instead of copying this um, onto both buttons, I'm just gonna take this out and I'm gonna call this a style object. Um, or maybe a better name is to have a button style. All right, and uh, what do I want here? I wanna also have this style and button style. But this doesn't exist, so let's go ahead and create that. So go all the way up at the top. I feel like this doesn't need to be in the wallet because then it doesn't need to re-render every time wallet is rendered. So we're just going to have a constant. Um, did we name it button style? Yes, we did. And we're going to paste the whole thing in here. All right. So let's save that. Let's refresh the page. Connect wallet. Okay. Disconnect wallet. Okay. Great. All right. So now we have the styling let's now display our balance so we want to have balance down here when we connect the wallet we want to actually see our balances right and so to do that we can use the use either balance so from use either we just have to import use either balance and what do we what networks do we want to support so let's go and take a look at app.js we have the main net ring b and coven so we want to support the three of them so we're going to have ring b as well we're going to have coven and we're going to have main net get back here and right here, let's go ahead and uh, create the three different um, variables, constants, right? So let's say cons, let's maybe start from ring B. I'm gonna call it ring B balance. And I'm gonna say use either balance. So use either balance takes two things. The first thing is the account, and that would just be from this account. Okay, so that's really straightforward. So it says, give me an address, all right? So this address would be something like zero X and then some numbers, I don't know, some numbers, all right? But um, it'd be something like this. It won't be, uh, it'll be AE something yeah, like this. Um, but here, we don't have to hard code that. We just have to say account, right? So whatever account is there, um, that's the address. And the next thing it does is, okay, which, the balance on which network, okay? So here we're saying that, again, we can put in the chain ID and we can say four like that. But again, it's not good practice. So one, what we want to do is to do what we did in app.js, very similar to that. So we're going to follow the same paradigm here. We're going to say ring B dot, uh, chain id all right so that's a lot more elegant and we are good to go and you can duplicate that a couple more times and you can change this so for the first one want to have colon for the next one you want to have mainnet and same thing here for the ring b you want to have colon and this you want to have mainnet right and now it says that if your account is connected then you have the account you have the disconnect button but now we want to put in the balance so this is where we store the balance right so we want to put something like here is where the display balances of the wallet display balance of wallet okay or display wallet balance more concise right 
So the way I would do that is I'll again try to have something like a, you can use the turnaway approach, but we can also use the short circuit. We can say, check whether ring B balance exceeds or not. If it exceeds, then do something. So in this do something, what do you want it to do? You can, uh, I'm just going to use the H4 now and I'm going to say ring B balance and I'm going to just open that up and just pass in the ring B balance. So ring B balance is going to come from here. And I said that if this exists, meaning if this is not a null value, if this exists, then do this. If not, then do nothing. So you could use this or you could use the ternary approach. But here, this is again more concise. I like the more concise approach. I'm like this, uh, I like to say that, hey, check for this first. Does this exist? If this exists, it means that this has successfully caught and there is a non-null value. So there's a valid value. Then go ahead and render that. So let me just save that and show you what happens now. If I connect wallet, uh, refresh the page, Whoops, let me refresh the page. Okay, it's because the react ring B balance itself is not a valid react child object. Uh, it's not a, a valid react child object. Um, instead, it is a big number. So what happened is we want to format this in some way so that this is rendered into a nice uh, integer number, right? And the way we can do that, we can write our own code to sort of hack around that or we could just bring in a helper. And so we bring in the helper, we do the easy option. We're going to say import, um, import what? I'm going to say import format either. Sorry for having to troubleshoot doing this live. And I'm going to say from here, we're going to say either's projects. Most of this stuff are what you're going to get when you first install um, use that anyway. So don't really have to worry about that. So we're going to say format either. So we're going to just take the big number and we're going to wrap them with a format either. And then we put our ring B balance like this. Save that. Okay, now we see that ring balance is zero. Great. Now let's change this account to an account where it's not zero. And it says not connected. Do I want to connect? Yes, connect that, please. And come back here. All right, cool. We see our ring balance. <laughs> All right. So if you want to format this a little bit to make it a little bit prettier, you absolutely can do that. So for example, you don't have to put them in one line. You can just put them into uh, another diff if you want to. So let me just add another diff and I'm going to close my diff right away because I don't want to forget about that. And I'm going to put my H4, move that in. Then I'm not going to have this anymore. Instead, I'm going to take this out and then I'm going to put this in. So kind of like a ring balance and then I have my brackets here. So now it's not going to be in the same line. Okay, that's good. And all that is left is to just duplicate this a couple of times. In fact, if you want to, you can also use a map, sort of like a dot map, and you can just map and then um, each one of them just map it into another thing. And from here, you can just return. Uh, you can return the div here. You can do that as well. But uh, since there is only three here, we don't. I don't really want to over-engineer this stuff. Uh, you can, if you're very familiar with React, you can do that. So I'm just gonna replace this. Um, uh, copy that two times. That's it. And ring B balance. No, that's not gonna be ring B balance anymore. That's gonna be colon balance. So this is gonna do the same thing as what I see as what we've seen above. We're gonna say that okay, if Cohen balance exceeds, then go ahead and render the whole thing. Now I want to change this to Cohen, and you want to do this as well. Mainnet balance, and now this is just gonna be mainnet. If you want to move the mainnet up, uh, you absolutely can. So you just move mainnet up before ring B Cohen. Uh, that's up to you. I'm just gonna keep it like that. In fact, we're gonna make sure that this whole div that is surrounding the three different, right? We wanna go ahead here and another div around the whole thing. And the reason for that is so we can use flex because flex is great. So we're gonna take flex and here are the three. Um, and at the closing div, then we can just tap off this in, right? Um, so the three of them are going to be between line 37 to 66. So line 37, 66 is just going to be the three of them here. And we're going to put the uh, uh, div and we're going to use a style as well. So very similar to what we've seen above, but we're going to use display equals to flex. So flex, and we want them to justify content. There's a lot of ways to justify this. You can have them in you know different ways, flex and flex dot, uh, flex and it's just going to put them aligned to the end start. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to use center, right? Because everything is better when they're centered, centered. And between them, how do you want? How much gap do you want them? How, how much padding do you want for uh, between the three uh, uh, child components here? So for me, I like them to have somewhere a bit of a gap, but not too much. I'm gonna say 10 pixel um, vertically and then 20 horizontally. So it's 10, 20. All right, just save that. And now I should have 
Okay, now I accidentally have one more ring B, so I don't need that. <laughs> I'm gonna cop delay that, all right? But yeah. Okay, so now I have ring B, Cohen, and main net. That's great. So I have all of that. Um, probably what we should do now, if you want to make it look pretty and stuff, you can. But uh, I would say like the first thing that that uh, irks me is I'm using this style object, and really I don't want to put any styles in here. I really rather all of them be in a CSS file. So uh, that's probably the first thing I'm going to do. If you want to follow along, you can uh, absolutely just stay on the video. If not, you could just stop here and just uh, unleash your creativity and um, try to make your dab a little prettier. Uh, I'm going to open up a CSS file now. If I go into app.js, I see that I'm bringing in import app.css. So I want to open up app.css. So that's going to be this file. And I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to change, going to take the wallet.js, put it on the side. And I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to... Maybe instead of button storm, I'm just gonna call it button now, btn. And I'm gonna speed up this really quickly. And then copy all of the remaining. And replace all of this with a semicolon. And I think this looks about right. Just add a semicolon at the end. Also wanna remove the quotation mark, so do that remove All right and now we have button so we can save this and now we don't need this anymore we could just remove this so kind of irked me that we had to do that it's quick and easy but i guess not uh not very elegant so we don't need the style anymore we could just control k instead what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a class name and the class name is just gonna be this btn so we're gonna say btn and we're gonna do the same thing here so copy the line Control L, Control C, and we're gonna find a button up here, and we're gonna do the same thing. So we we put, remove the style, and instead we're gonna use the style class name. And since you're in the CSS file, you might as well go ahead and create a um, a D for the the, the different uh, the three different balances here. So I can call it bot balance. So B A L stands for balance. I'm gonna give them a border, and the border is gonna be a one pixel solid, uh, and gonna be a color like C C C C C C. All right. And then I'm going to have a padding as well, so they don't clump up to each other. So I'm going to say 1% and 5%. And I'm going to give it a border radius so they appear a bit roundish and not um, just a boring rectangle. And then I'm going to give it a background. And the background, I kind of know what color I want, but I would just go for like an RGB. Uh, I'm going to have 72 here, 176 here, and 226 here. And it can optionally take a sort of opacity if you want to but no instead i'm gonna just say take 10 percent of that so just kind of give it a nice uh you know opacity color so that's it i'm gonna save all of that but this is not reflected because we haven't really bring this balance anywhere in here so what we should do instead is to look for this div and we should say class name and do the same thing we're gonna call it balance ball balance ball copy that i'm gonna paste that into this div as well i'm gonna do the same thing for for this one all right and now, um, it's looking great, but we could still make it a little bit better by spacing that up, uh, spacing that out a little bit. You can either add a horizontal line between them two. So for example, HR. HR stands for horizontal line. Save that, and now you have that. If you disconnect, <coughs> so now we have the three balances. And we can disconnect and we can, we can uh, connect uh, to our wallet again. But I realized also when I when I mouse over, it's really not changing. The button doesn't look like it's a button because, you know, in, in good UX, you expect some sort of, uh, uh, user expects some sort of feedback, some sort of visual feedback here. When I hover over a button, it should look like a button. It should at least change color or something to tell me that it's a button. But here it's not doing that. So you can also try to, and, and some at some point, you're probably going to use a full UX library. I'm going to probably walk about, uh, uh, walk walk you through that. Um, I, you can use maybe Chakra, you can use uh, Material UI, or you can use End Design. All all the three of them are fantastic. Honestly, in my opinion, I like to use uh, End Design. I've done projects using Material UI and I've done projects using Chakra as well. So they're all fantastic. Or Tailwind, Tailwind is also fantastic. So you can use any of this. But for now, we're not gonna try to introduce a dependency just to change the just to give us that that visual feedback. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something um, maybe a bit clever, a bit a bit a bit too clever. So we're gonna go in here. And I'm going to go ahead and say on mouse over and give it an effect when I do that. So I'm going to say on mouse over, do something. And what is that something? Let's go ahead and create that. It can be outside, I think. So let's try and say something like find a function. I'm going to say change background. Background. It takes E, which is the event, and it returns something. 
you can also have this as a constant change background e if there's only one you don't need to use that e you can just do it like that and you say take that and take e.target dot style dot background give it a different color this time so uh, let's try chocolate all right and can copy that and i'm going to say change background all right so let's try and this is the please connect wallet all right so if you disconnect this refresh the page disconnect all right so if we okay so if we try that again if we hover in mouse over it becomes chocolate but if we hover out the color stays on permanently so this is not doing what we want it to do so we want to actually have another effect here that says on mouse out you can either use on mouse out um let me show you you can either use on mouse out or on mouse leave there is a small difference uh concerning how they propagate the events propagate so on mouse out and on mouse leave the differences let me show you on mouse out versus on mouse leave right uh it says here on mouse leave is fired when a pointer has exceeded the element and all of its descendants so if let's say there's a div here and there are some elements there's some descendants here and when you say on mouse leave it's going to say that this thing has completely exceeded all of the element and all of the, the, the descendants whereas on mouse out is fired when a pointer leaves the element or leave one of the elements descendants so even if the point is still within the element so there's a small subtle difference in here uh, for me i'm going to use on mouse out now so i'm going to say on mouse out and i'm just going to change this background again i'm going to say reset background so clearly i don't have reset background so i could go up there and copy this and i would change this call it reset and now i'm going to change it back to the normal color and what is the normal color we have it here right uh, antique white so i'm going to copy that and paste this in here whoops and if i save that so this should all work now connect yep okay so when we come in there now it looks like there's a little bit of ux um, a, a bit more visual feedback right we connect wallet okay now it's connected and now we see ring b common mainnet all right so now we need to do is to just copy the same thing here we just say on mouse over on mouse out take that i guess you can also do that on a css level and just say hover and hover and change that um you know uh, basically button you can have this like, like hover you can also do that so in here you can have button or hover and can do that but um this is not a really a css tutorial i'm not really gonna just worry about that but you can i think that's probably better practice as well so you can have that um just gonna paste this two in here save it and i think that should be it i mean if you want to you can go and refactor it uh, at the hover effect here but yep it's doing its job great okay so now i have a fully functional dap uh, i can allow my use visitors to connect with the web3 wallet i can allow them to disconnect that um, and they can see all the balances and maybe you can add some sort of features in here where they could maybe try to participate in a lottery in a uh, stake some prizes uh, claim some gift join a community using some balance you know so maybe charge them a little bit of um, a bit of if for them to join a community or uh, maybe some some sort of ballot where they can vote for something vote for a proposal so you can do you can start to flesh it out here but really the, the whole tutorial is really focused on the use that so i'm not really going to go into all the details there but you if you want to you can try and play around try and change to another account and try and see you know what happens there but yeah we have the ring b balance common balance mainnet balance and we can confirm that these numbers are all correct we can see that if i go into the mainnet i do in fact have zero if and so they're, they're great i mean this is a, a short and simple use that tutorial and that concludes our short and simple tutorial for use dap using use dap to create uh, decentralized apps with react and i hope that you find it interesting i hope that it helps you with your project uh, remember to subscribe share the video uh, tell a friend about the video also tell me in the comment section what kind of uh, future projects you want to see on the channel what kind of projects you want us to build in the future and maybe you want to have a more full-fledged ui framework kind of thing uh, powering your react app powering your decentralized app uh, let me know and i'll see you in the next video goodbye